here we are folks this is the new oil pan that is the old oil pan see it's a little bit shallower versus this taller pan all right what are we doing we are doing initial drop in I have no transmission hooked up I am strictly dropping this down into the engine bay to see what I have to do for motor mounts. So this is going to go in and more than likely it's going to come right back out. We've got to see if I've got to order some universal mounts or if we can do something with what we've already got. Beans. All right, here's what we're looking at stock GM mounts compared to the stock. Nissan frame where the mounts would bolt. I don't think it's going to work in that current state You would definitely have to shave off a little here and a little here for it to drop the thing is is this whole motor Needs to go this way a couple inches the original motor sat over a couple inches from the center of the truck So I think it would be easiest to go with the universal mounts. I'm going to go ahead and take these mounts off. I'm going to hoist this motor back up and I'm going to take these mounts off and I'm going to set it in there farther. Right now, the current way we're set up, that motor is sitting mighty high. Let's see if we can get a view on our oil pan compared to that cross member we notched out. So I'm going to lift this motor back up and take those motor mounts off, the uh, stock GM uh, mounts, and see what it looks like from there. <clears throat> All right, let's not get overly excited. It's just sitting in there, basically sitting on that cross member we notched out. That's about as low as it's gonna go. It's actually probably gonna come up about a quarter of an inch. We gotta come up so we can clear that bottom belt anyways. Right now it's sitting on that cross member. But that's pretty close to where it's gonna go. I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna cut these mounts off. The factory Nissan mount locations, cut those off the frame. Cut this side here off the frame. Right there. It's going to get cut off the frame. And we're going to get some universal mounts. Those were sitting back kind of far anyways. Here's our bolt holes for the uh, mounts. And this is the way over here. It's even worse on this side. Let's see if I can get a good representation. See, there's the holes for the mount and our frame ends, that thing ends right there. So we're gonna cut that off. So I think the easiest thing to do is cut that off, but it looks good. It's looking good. Dork. Man, I gotta get something. Pull that thing Yeah, it looks good. That intake is gonna come up to probably about somewhere in here. So we should still be able to get the hood on, no problem. In its current situation.
All right, here we are. Here's the original Nissan mounts on this here. And what we've done is that was welded on, cut the welds off, pulled them off, smoothed the welds down pretty far. This here was up a little bit, so I hammered it down, cleaned it up. I'm going to run a bead across the top here, and our new motor mounts will mount somewhere in here. I will uh, wait till I get those in the mail. I'm going to try to hook up the transmission to the motor right now. Try to weasel it in there, try to get it to where we want it. That way we know where to put the mounts. Here we are. We got our motor mounts in today from Speedway Motors. These things are hefty, hefty, hefty. Look at those things. Those things are ginormous. Ginormous and beefy. Okay. So I've got the motor sitting in here and the transmission. The transmission sucked up to the motor, setting in there. I did have to take out did have to take out this first cross member that the original transmission hooked up to. I could not get this transmission with the motor weaseled in there. It just would not go. So this had to come out. The the uh, new transmission is going to mount uh, I'm going to say 6 inches, 6 to 10 inches farther back than the original. So I'm going to have to do some modifications to the uh, you got this mount, this uh, cross member and then there's another cross member that's probably a, a foot or maybe even closer. I'm going to use that cross member, which is welded into the frame. I'm going to use that. I'm going to come off a uh, with some gussets and some plate and mount our transmission to that probably. And we will have to do some tweaking on this to get this back in just for the rigidity. So we got our motor mounts. These are way bigger than what we need. I'm going to have to cut some of this off. Cut some of this off to get it to where it needs to go. Uh, the passenger side is going to be pretty short. The passenger side is probably only going to need like that much, whereas the driver side will probably need a little more, just because that motor is offset. So I'm going to mount these plates. Try to figure out where we got to cut these. You don't want to cut too much. It's easier to cut more than to add. So be careful trimming those. So I'm going to mount these plates on there. Motor sitting pretty close to where I want it. <clears throat> Motor sitting pretty close to where I want it. I've got a piece of uh, about a half inch, maybe a little smaller piece of plywood right there. You can see over our first cross member. That's just to hold that motor up to where I want it. If we get those mounts welded in, we'll take that out. That should give us a little bit of gap between the oil pan and the mount. So I've still got to check on the angle of the motor, get it relative to the angle of the pinion. Uh, we'll work on that. It's pretty close to where I want it. Make those final adjustments and we'll get these mounts welded in. So I did forget to say these mounts, these mounts are from Speedway Motors online. I did, uh, forgot to say these are $146 shipped with taxes. 
So they're a little bit pricey compared to the ones you can get on Amazon for around 40 bucks. You can get some mounts on Amazon for around 40 bucks. They're two separate tabs that mount to these bushings. They're two separate tabs. Um, to me, this is worth the money just because, uh, especially if you're doing this by yourself, you don't have to hold them tabs together and try to get those tabs lined up to where it fits these bushings perfectly and then try to get that all tacked in and welded. This here, you can hold it as one piece. Uh, therefore, I think it would be easier to use these than the two separate tabs. But if you're wanting to go cheapo cheapo, you can get them on Amazon for like 40 bucks. All right, here's where we stand. Got the mounts tacked in, cut to length, tacked in. Mm, I can't see on here, too much sun. Right there, tacked in, that one's super short. So now all we gotta do is take the motor out again. Take the motor out and we'll clean those up. Nice and pretty, get nice and shiny metal and weld them in solid motors out again here is our mounts we've got to clean up all the suit off them tacks clean it up real good get it down to bare metal I took the bushings out of the mounts they were a burger to get out they were tight but I was able to get them out and then we're gonna do a solid weld on these Clean them up real good and do a solid weld. All right, mounts are in, yeah. welded, and primered. I'm gonna come back and probably paint some of this up and clean it up and paint it up, yeah. make it look good. Yeah. But now we're gonna set the motor back in again yeah. to make sure we cleared that cross member. So, time to set the motor back in there again. Hey Dad, how about the video because of the, the because of we were beating and we were driving my car. Alright, scoop. Alright, right now the transmission is hooked up by that block mm -hmm. and strap. Motor is in. Yes. Locked up. I mean, to the motor mounts. Battery's fixing the die, so let's try to get this done. Same thing over here. Motor mounts are welded in. Clearance wise, see if I can get this. We clear the pan on our cross member. So that means it's sitting on our motor mounts. Next step, we got to position the transmission where we want it, as well as connect it to the transmission member, cross member. Dad, Dad, is this a car radio? Yeah. No. Yeah. And a car radio. I'm driving video. All right, I think we are going to wrap up this video. I'm not gonna do the transmission mount on this video. I may not even show it at all. But here is the motor in, mounted. The motor mount's welded in. 
I went ahead and put the alternator back on, cut the bracket where the uh, pump used to go, the steering pump, power steering pump, cut that off, smoothed it out a little bit, put the alternator back on, put the intake in. I may actually be running a different intake. I may get to run a Trailblazer SS intake, which is supposedly the best intake, truck intake for these motors flow wise. So anyways, I wanted to put something on there so we could get a scope of what we look like. You'll notice I've got the exhaust manifolds upside down and pointing forward. I am toying with the idea of a turbo, which in this case I would run, probably gonna get some headers that are pointed this way. And we may turbo this thing, a budget turbo, because I think that would be the easiest route to take exhaust wise. Because over here on this side, it is extremely, extremely tight down there. Uh, it would take a lot of finessing to get that pipe to go through that, through the frame and the motor. So turbo may be in the books. A small turbo. I don't want to go anything crazy. But that's what she looks like. She's pretty big once you put the intake and all that extra accessories on there. The hood still closes. So I thought looking at it, it was going to be, I thought that intake and the alternator were going to stick above the hood. But they clear barely. So that is it. Motor in, mounts in, welded in, sitting in there on its own, besides the transmission being held up with a strap. And block of wood. Thanks for watching. Also, I put this camper topper back on. I am going for ultimate sleeper. Those hot rods on the interstate aren't gonna know what hit them.